Hi everyone, so let me help you guide you through this question here. So we've got a nest egg of $418,000 with an APR of 5.3% compounded monthly. Find the monthly annuity yield for a 16 year annuity. So how much money will you receive each month you're in 16 years of retirement from this nest egg, right? Um, so um, basically You've saved up this money during your working life. It's in an account. It pays out a fixed amount every month. Okay. Um, and by the way, after the 16 years is done, all the money's gone. So maybe you want to extend your annuity in case you, you would live longer. Because let's say you retired at 65. Well, 65 plus you know 16 years is. 81. So in other words, if you live past 81 years of age, this money will all be gone. So so you want to be thinking, you know, do I need to extend that annuity or, or whatever, right? Anyway, um, so we got to use this formula here. Mostly annuity yield equals the nest egg times this. So we got to find our T, our number of payments, monthly payments, and our monthly interest rate R, okay? So can you find T? So T is going to be 16 years. So you're going to get these monthly payments for 16 years from when you're 65 to when you're 81, right? Um, uh, so 16 times 12, right? Because in each year there's 12 months. So we go 16 times 12. So that's 192 monthly payments from when you're age 65 to when you're 81, right? Over the course of your retirement. Okay. So, um, and our rate is 5.3% over 12, or 0 0.053 over 12. And let's see what that looks like. Just put the calculator here, sorry. 0 0.053 over 12 and it's a big long decimal number um, 0 0.0044 forever okay so you know I could round that to you know six six you know six seven and, and if I just use that I'm sure the whole thing will work out fine okay um, but I'm actually going to uh, just use it in this form. So I'm just going to, instead of R, I'm just going to type in 0 0.053 over 12. And I'm going to put that into the formula uh, just to get a, a more accurate answer. And so I don't have to worry about how many decimal points am I using, am I using enough, right? So nest egg is 418,000. So we go 418,000. This is the top of the fraction times R, so I might do parentheses, and I got, I'm got i going to plug in 0 0.053 over 12 for my interest rate, and then times 1 plus R to the power of T. So I'm going to go 1 plus 0 0.053 over 12. Then to the power of T, so to the power of 192. So there's a couple of things to talk about here. This is the top of the fraction. The first thing I want to just address is a common error uh, a lot of students might do is they might, tell me what's wrong with this. They might go, you know, 1.053 over 12. Can you tell me what's wrong with that? If I put that in the calculator, you know, 1.053 over 12. Now I'm dividing not just the, the little decimal at the end, I'm dividing everything including the 1 by 12. And that gives me, you know, 0 0.08775, right? So that's way less than 1. That doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be 1 plus the rate. So, so this is definitely nonsense. Be careful of that because that's not the same thing as going, you know, 1 plus 0 0.053 over 12, is it? Right? So that is 1 plus the interest rate, which is 0 0.00, you know, it's it's 0.44% point, point basically. So the interest rate is this number, the 0 0.0044. That's the interest rate. So 1 plus R is 1.0044166, okay? So, so don't ever do that. We do need this plus sign here. It's very important, okay, to separate, okay? 
And you have to remember your 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 uh, calculator understands PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. When your calculator looks at this, there's a divide and there's an add. Which is it going to do first? If you follow the order of operations, do you divide first or add first? Which? You divide first. And your calculator understands that. So when you plug this into the calculator, it will go inside these parentheses and it will divide this to get the point zero four four. Then it will add one. Okay. So that's one thing to talk about. Something else to talk about is, you know, do I need extra parentheses like around this because of the because of the exponent? How do I know that this exponent will just apply to the one plus r and not to this r and not to the four hundred eighteen thousand? How do you know the exponent is not going to apply over here? How do you know that? Okay, so the reason again is because your calculator is very good at the order of operations, right? So it understands PEMDAS, and so does the computer. And we'll use Microsoft Excel or, or other spreadsheet shop spreadsheet software to, to, to do that. So there's an exponent on the one plus r, and that's all. When your calculator sees this, it comes along. And it notices there's a multiply here, there's a divide, there's parentheses, there's exponents. It will go inside the parentheses first. It will do order of operations. It will go inside the parentheses. It will calculate this. Then we'll go inside here. We'll calculate this correctly. It will divide. Then it will add the one. And then instead of multiplying, it will do this exponent on this thing, right? And then it will multiply each of the three numbers, okay? So your calculator is going to calculate all of this correctly using the order of operations, all right? So that's the top of the fraction. Uh, let's go ahead and plug that in, I guess. Uh, what should I do? Let me do that so we can all see that clearly, right? Okay, so I'm going to go 418000 parenthesis. Okay, so I think I did that correctly. Let me go back over that. So, yeah, so that, that's how I'm typing it in, just as I wrote down, right? Uh, I think I got that. And so, uh, enter. So, 4302.7, so that number there, right? All right, so that's the top of the fraction. Now the bottom of the fraction, 1 plus r to the power of t minus 1. Um, again, I'm going to use, instead of using the big long decimal, I'm going to go 1 plus r. So 1 plus 0 0.053 over 12. That's my 1 plus r to the power of t. And then subtract 1. If I plug all that in, um, that will work, right? And again, your calculator understands PEMDAS. It'll it'll look at this. It'll go, oh, parentheses. It'll go inside here. It will divide this first. Then it will add one. Great. Then it'll say, OK, now we've done everything inside the parentheses. Now I'm going to do exponents. It'll do exponents. See, so it does, it does PEMDAS well. It goes parentheses, exponents, right? And then there's nothing to multiply, nothing to divide. But there's a subtract, so then it'll subtract one at the very end. Okay, so plugging that all in at once will work just great. So let me set this up so you can actually see what I'm doing. I think that's okay. So parenthesis one plus zero point zero five three over twelve. Oh, I forgot to put in one hundred ninety two for t for t. You saw that, didn't you? Good job. So I should have wrote 192 there, and that gives us this number, 1.33 and so on, right? Now that, by the way, is saved in answer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, oops, there we go. I'm going to go second, and then down here you see A and S for answer. I'm going to go second, answer. Now I'm going to press enter. 
So you don't do that again. Second, answer, enter. Okay. This is stored in answer. That's nice because I want to take the top and divide it by the bottom. So I'm going to go 4302.706513. I'm going to divide that by second, answer, because ANS, the 1.33 number is stored in ANS. Press enter and that's my final answer. 3233.618 etc. Right? So anyway, get 3, 2, 3, 3, point six one eight and so on. And I've got to round to the nearest dollar. So to the nearest dollar that is 3, 2, 3, the 6 after the the units. So I round up to 3, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So the answer is if this is the fixed interest rate for 16 years while you're retired and you've saved up this amount of money then it will pay out this each month and then by age 81 it'll be all gone okay <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna write out these numbers in case you didn't catch them but the bottom of the fraction is 1.33061 uh, 651 okay so you could ob obviously like type this out and divide by that right so you should get this in the top this on the bottom to get this and round it to this okay um, another way of course to do it is to do a one line calculator entry so you could have done the top of the fraction and then you just in your fraction you just type in divide but then make sure to put parentheses around the entire bottom okay now I don't usually do one line calculator entries just because um, students don't usually don't like them because you can't see the whole thing in your little calculator screen they're actually brilliant if you're using a computer because on a computer on Excel or Google Sheets or, or something you can actually see this whole thing right and you can type it all in and hit enter and it'll just give you the answer straight away so that's great to do I mean you're welcome to do it on the calculator too but uh, just be careful with make sure you put parentheses in the right spot Okay. A lot of students would forget these parentheses on the bottom, um, for example. All right. And just to talk about this about in real life, real quick, I mean, interest rates don't usually don't stay this exact same amount for 16 years. I mean, there's recessions and there's booms and, you know, the, it, that's, that's kind of silly. Um, so, but but it gives us a good ballpark figure, and um, you know, so and, and of course we can, yeah. So so um, we we could also, if we wanted to, we could do like a low a low estimate and a high estimate, and we could see well, it'll pay out between say two and a half thousand dollars and four thousand, depending on the interest rate, right?